All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. We're going to look at a PowerPoint entitled Personal Safety and Protective Clothing. It's again from Dr. Toth and Dr. Bill of NC State. And just watching the previous lecture, you're going to, you're going to recap some of the stuff talking about the acute, chronic, and allergic effects of pesticides. So we're going to kind of go through that pretty fast because I want to get to um, the, the second half of this presentation and, and talk a little bit more about the PPE. So forgive me if I go by these slides a little fast. You do have the slides available to you directly underneath the uh, the lecture link on Blackboard. So if you wanted to uh, save them to your computer, print them out and study it that way. But it's kind of a recap of the previous lecture and then we're going to talk about our PPE. All right, types of toxicity to pesticides. We have acute, chronic, and allergic. Uh, acute, the brief exposure. You know, it happens within minutes or hours to a pesticide. Symptoms are usually obvious and uh, reversible. It's less than the, the 24 hours as previously stated. Chronic adverse effects following prolonged exposure, weeks or years to a pesticide, usually results from repeated doses of the pesticide and then allergic immune system response to the pesticide. Permanent worsens with recurrent exposures. Allergy can extend to similar surfaces and can be fatal. Routes of exposure, inhalation, oral, thermal, uh, inhalation is nose and lungs, oils, mouth to the stomach, and then dermal is skin, uh, uh, is your skin and through your eyes. Inhalation, breathing dust, vapors, oil, mouth, eating, drinking, smoking, all that, not washing your hands. Then dermal containing the eyes or skin, pesticide spills and splashes big time when you're mixing, uh, transporting those pesticides, especially when you're mixing that concentrate, open cuts in the skin. Inadequate protective clothing when applying to pesticide. Think about the example again of me weed eating, cutting my legs, and then spraying uh, pesticides and getting a drift or mist into the wound or cut. Effects uh, inhalation, pain or tightness in the chest, oil burning in the mouth, sore throat, upset stomach, dermal irritation, temporary or permanent blindness, and then itching or a rash or even blisters uh, upon the dermal or skin. Um, symptoms of acute toxicity, blurred vision, diarrhea, di uh, dizziness, excessive sweating, fatigue, headache, vomiting, and uh, stomach cramps. Um, chronic toxicity effect, tumors, genetic effects, uh, miscarriages, impotency, uh, birth defects, infertility, sterility, and then nervous system disorders. These effects may result from a single exposure. Uh, that does not become apparent until much later. So, like I said, how are you going to pinpoint that time? You may have only sprayed this pesticide once or twice in your life. 20 years down the road, you start seeing some of these effects. Or you can have repeated exposures to pesticides over a long period of time that may even be less toxic. Allergic reaction, systemic, asthma and shock, skin irritation, rash, and blisters, and sword, eyes and nose itchy, and watery eyes, and even sneezing. Emergency response to the pesticide poison. And you can tell, guys, this, uh, this, pest, this was taken in the early 2000s by uh, the clothes and the cars in the parking lot. Um, just kidding. I know some of the pictures are old uh, in this, uh, in this um, presentation, but the information is still, still good. Um, Mercy response, minister first aid, call the physician or EMS, take pesticide labeled with you if you're taking them to the hospital or have it readily available for EMS personnel, and then call, uh, call the poison control centers at those numbers there. Thermal exposure, what are we going to do? Drench the skin with water, remove the contaminated clothing. Yeah, you might have to see somebody without their clothes, but if you're protecting their life, you need to get them out of it. Wash the body with the mild soap and water. Do not allow the victim to chill or overheat. Apply loose, clean, dry covering to the burns and do not apply ointments unless prescribed by a physician. Eyes. Wash the eyes quickly but gently with water or commercial eye wash. Rinse for at least 15 minutes and then do not use chemicals or drugs to rinse, rinse the eyes. Oil exposure. Rinse the mouth with plenty of water. Drink water or milk up to one quart. Induce vomiting only if it's uh, suggested by the product label or if you're talking to EMS personnel on the phone. Inhalation. First thing you got to do is remove them from the exposure. Get them to that fresh air. However, make sure the scene is safe. You don't want to go into uh, an agricultural field. The guy is spraying or applying 
you know, something like methyl bromide, and they're out there, their respirator leaks or whatever, and, you know, they pass out. Well, if you don't have a respirator on the same protective equipment, how are you going to go get them? Make sure that you can get them without endangering yourself. But if you get this guy out uh, uh, from an inhalation exposure, get him to that fresh air, loosen any tight clothing uh, that can strict the breathing, and then apply artificial respiration if the victim has stopped breathing, CPR. Minimal protective PPE. This is the minimum, long sleeve shirt. I'm always guilty of that. And to think about it, I've always always heard, and you know, a few times I've tried it, you're actually a lot cooler with the long sleeve shirt. You know, the sun heating up your skin, you get hotter. Keeping that long sleeve shirt, you actually feel cooler, especially if it's a light colored shirt, not a dark colored shirt that reflects that light. Long sleeve, uh, long pants, uh, chemical resistant boots. I hate wearing those things. Uh, they just drip the sweat, and it's like your feet standing in a, in a puddle. Uh, wide brim hard hat. Definitely have not used one of those in my life, but I have used you know the regular hard hats. Uh, eye goggles if needed, always. Chemical resistant apron when mixing and loading. Yeah, I haven't done that. Um, do as I say, not as I do, ladies and gentlemen. PPE types of protective, you have chemical resistant, which will be rubber, neoprene, plastic, non woven fabric coated with a plastic or other material. Then you have non-chemical resistant, which is cotton, leather, and canvas. I do not like cotton gloves. I can't stand them. I don't like pruning with them, and I'm sure not going to apply pesticides with them. Body suits, hoods, uh, hoods um, sorry about that, gloves, footwear, hats, and aprons. As you can see here, you know, the gentleman's on a, on a tractor. He's probably putting out something pretty potent. But the sad thing is, if I'm actually having to wear all this stuff, I'd much rather be in an enclosed cab tractor. Need the maximum protection when mixing and loading pesticides or handling the concentrated chemicals. You can see here, uh, you know, he's mixing it up on the front of the tractor. Uh, that's when he's most vulnerable and most dangerous. He does have the gloves, coveralls. Um, he does have goggles for splash. Maybe you want something over your mouth. I mean, you don't want that splashing up in your mouth, but at least it's not getting in his eyes or on his clothes. Reusable protective clothing. Chemical resistant can be cleaned and reused. Suits, hoods, gloves, boots, rubber, or plastic. You need to inspect them each time you use them. Fabric coveralls do not clean and reuse if contaminated with a concentrate pesticide. You need to throw them away. Eyewear, respirators, helmets can be cleaned and reused. Um, you know, even even the clothes that you wear, guys, you know, if it's just long sleeve pants, long sleeve shirt, which some of these labels, that's all they require, you don't want to wash it with your child's clothes. You don't want to wash it with your, your wife's clothes or, other, you know, your husband's if you're spraying that chemical. Keep a pile of chemical clothes. You know, you don't even have to wait till the washer gets full. I mean, you need to wash that stuff as soon as you bring it in. Um, get, get it off there and... Um, don't let it sit around and touch any of your other clothing. Especially do not mix it with your child or your spouse's. Disposable, chemical resistant, but cannot be cleaned. Or the pesticide, that's like those, um, I'm sure you've seen them, but it's almost like, a, uh, almost like a papery type of jacket, and then they have the pants with it, but they are one-time use. You get rid of non-woven fabric coated with a plastic suit, suits, hoods, and footwear. Um, yeah, they've got like the uh, almost like a baggie that goes over your boot. It's disposable. Dust masks and some respirators are even uh, d uh, disposable. Definitely, these cartridges on his uh, on his um, respirator is is disposable. You're going to throw that away, and some, depending on the chemical, you may not want to use it again the next time. Respirators. You have air supply and respirators. They supply the user with clean, uncontaminated air from an independent source. Uh, use oxygen supplies, low or fumigating in closed areas. It's like a, you know, like a firefighter would wear into a burning house. You may have to do that. You definitely got to do that when you're, uh, when you're applying methyl bromide. Air purifying respirators include dust masks, devices containing body and cartridges with air purifying materials, and devices containing a body and canister with air. Uh, I think I just double repeated myself. Slow down, Eric. Uh, but most of the time, you're going to be using this stuff right here. Guys, some of the stuff that we use mainly just need the regular dust mats. You know, these things right here, um, you know, not too expensive, but, you know, had to replace these cartridges. Um, it just depends on what you're putting out. Um, 
I wore it. I started wearing this when I, uh, you know, you heard me in the last lecture talk about speed zone. Spray speed zone all day and go home with a massive headache. Uh, started wearing one of these. Uh, that cut down on the headaches. Um, air purifying respirators. Fit test. Perform before each before uh, before your first use. You want to make sure that it fits. It's like a gas mask. You don't want to you don't want to go off to war with a gas mask that doesn't fit. Uh, fit check. Perform before each use. And then wash the respirator after each use and then store it in a dry, clean place. Uh, when handling fumigants, small amounts of fumigants can be fatal. They're extremely toxic gases. Methyl bromide. Must wear the proper respirator for the fumigant you're applying. Should wear the respirator during all exposures. When applying a chemical, removing the tarp, uh, you know, anytime you're handling, never work alone when applying fumigants. That's why with methyl bromide, you got to have two guys. One standing way back off here in full suit gear, ready to go in case you're down here spraying and you fall over. He can come in and get you. Uh, indoors, use as an air supplied, uh, use an air supplied respirator. Wash clothes in which you apply pesticides separately from other clothing. I just mentioned that. Um, wear gloves and work in a well ventilated area. When you're washing them, rinse clothing, hand rinse or washing machine, wash a few items at a time. Rinse close twice. Use two entire wash cycles if necessary. Run the machine one cycle after removing clothes to remove any pesticide residues from uh, from washer. Uh, and do not wash badly contaminated clothing. Boy, my wife really likes this. Uh, you mean you're going to have to wash your clothes twice and then run it again separately to get the residues out? Um, and she's kind of mad at me, but she's glad I, that she knows that I know what I'm talking about, that it doesn't affect our little girls. And references. Wow, this was a quick one. APC, the old one, guys. You know, you're in the new manual, but we're giving credit where credit is due. I will see you guys on the next lecture.